zijn er wel voor de CEO Lake Sign here. Welcome to Senate Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually wasn't planning to speak, but uh, this past weekend, my name is Steve Malcolm, I represent Manchester Ward 8, Hillsborough District 15. This past weekend, I spent a lot of time reading a fairly new book on American history called Thomas Paine and the Promise of the American Revolution by Harvey K. And I come to you today imbued with the spirit of Thomas Paine. Uh, I've always opposed seatbelt legislation. I remember when Jerry Williams, the radio talk show host in Massachusetts and the new RKO and WPZ led the fight and overturned it down there. Uh, but I was kind of taking a back seat this year because there are many other issues I'm concerned about. So I decided not to address this issue when it passed the House. But I feel the need to today. You probably remember Thomas Paine as the author of Common Sense, The Sunshine Patriot, The Summer Soldier. Uh, Thomas Paine said three things that I think are applicable today. One thing he said is that we have the power to begin the world over again. And by that he meant we have the power to change from not just being a colony of England, but to start again imbued with the idea that man is born free in the spirit of John Locke and the enlightened thinkers of the 18th century. That there are certain inalienable rights that Jefferson picked up upon. And that's why, while I agree with the previous speaker, I disagree that he says he's earned his rights. Don't earn rights. There are certain inalienable rights that I think Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine spelled out for us. And when we form ourselves into government, again, under the Paine theory, we do so, so I don't hurt you. I give up a little bit of my freedom to become a citizen of a governed society. And I do that to protect myself, because by agreeing not to hurt you, I'm agreeing that you're not going to hurt me. That's one of the basic trade-offs. But with seatbelts, we're not getting any of that. The woman that spoke from that other microphone said that we have laws against BWI and against speeding, and she's right, we do. And they are made so that I don't hurt you. If I'm drunk, I'm more likely going to hurt you when I'm driving. If I'm speeding and outrageous and not over the speed limit, I'm not only going to hurt myself, I'm going to hurt you. So we form ourselves into society, so I won't hurt you. But where we draw the line is when government makes laws to prevent me from hurting myself. That's where the line should not be drawn. That's where Thomas Paine and Thomas Jefferson and the founders would be rolling over in their collective graves today if they were to hear this bill and learn that 49 states had this. It would be like, we go back to the horse and buggy age that he was speaking of, it would be like if they had a law in colonial times saying, well, we know it's not good to ride a horse for more than four hours a day because the horse gets tired and you're more likely to have an accident. So we're going to have a law saying you can't ride your horse more than three hours at a time. Well, of course we wouldn't have such a law. Individual people back there knew what was best for them. They knew they took a chance if they were riding a horse that was perhaps tired. So we should not make laws that are only involved in people harming themselves. That's what this does. If we want to start making laws that society is going to crack down on individuals, we should have cops out there arresting every large person they see walking down the street. Because that person has been eating chocolate or fatty foods that are creating themselves a situation where they are more vulnerable to hurt themselves. They are more likely to have a heart attack than a thin person like me. This law not only has me stopped if I'm not wearing a seatbelt and do something else wrong, it has me stopped if I don't do anything else wrong. So that woman walking down the street that's a little overweight, she should be stopped and we should stop everybody overweight the same way with this law, we're going to stop everybody that's not wearing a seatbelt. Think of what that means. Albert Einstein, a great scientist, said that there is nothing more harmful to society than passing laws which cannot be enforced or which can only be enforced haphazardly. If you have 70% of the pet people wearing seatbelts, that means 30% are not. That means 30% are breaking the law every time they get behind the seat of their car. That means they all should be arrested every day, because if we have laws, we should be serious about them. We cannot be serious about this law. It sends the wrong signal that society is watching out for you, that there's big brother out there. Please, of all the things you do, this is the worst. This symbolizes nanny state government. This symbolizes a revolt exactly against the freedoms that so many people have fought and died for. 
Whether I wear a seatbelt or not should be my business because I'm only hurting myself, not you. It's not like banning from smoking from restaurants where I might be hurting somebody else and my smoke goes into their, their ears or eyes or lungs. It's not like speeding or DWI. This is simply trying to protect me from myself. You know, nobody's telling you you can't wear a seatbelt if you don't pass this. All these people that stand up and say, I saved myself, good for you. You're smart to not wear a seatbelt. Just don't.